Hello YouTube, again I am back with Cameron at the Westpot Tropical Fish and we are going to learn all about by shears. Wait, by shears? Is that how you guys I, say it? It's, it's a dead language man, say whatever you want. Yeah, okay. Or bikers, or bikers, bickers, whatever. <laughs> <laughs> So what we have here is going to be one of the larger species. These are tank raised. This is Polypterus enlisheri. Sometimes it's called the red Bashir. I like to just call them Endleys. And please note, I say it Bashir. No one out west does that. I don't know why it's a divider of the Rockies. I'm not from here. Uh, these guys are a really pretty Bashir, especially if you have them on a darker substrate. I know many people uh, recommend keeping them always on garnet sand, which is sometimes hard to find or expensive. I don't normally do it and just keep them on a softer, darker sand substrate. Uh, these guys will have that really nice black barring to them along with a prehistoric dinosaur look, one of the biggest draws to these guys. Uh, they will also have some nice kind of reddish brown to them, especially as they mature. I really like Bashirs. They do have to, unfortunately, in my tanks compete with catfish for space. They do a lot of what you see here, which is sitting there and looking really cool. They'll trundle around on their little fins. Uh, sometimes they'll actually actively swim in the midwater, but they will at least be out during the day. And especially if you grow them out enough, it's really hard to miss a fish that's at least a foot long. Uh, disclaimer here is that there is a lot of debate as to exactly how predatory some of these guys are, or how big a tank ray specimen would get. Wild caught in Lishri have been recorded at reaching up to 31 inches. Of course, water changes, size of the tank, I'm not saying the fish grow to the side of their tank or that we should necessarily touch that, it's more if they're in a small tank, they may become stunted. But these guys with plenty of water changes in space, I would expect a tank ray specimen to at least hit probably the 20, 24 inch mark. These guys, I would say, are a little bit more predatory, so you would want to be a bit choosier about what you'd put them with. But otherwise, a pretty peaceful, really fascinating fish, especially if you lean a bit more uh, on the carnivore side. These were one of the first guys I ever kept in this uh, group of fish. So here we have, these are gonna be wild caught larger fellas. This is Polypterus buttocopheri. I know that recently a paper came out that I believe, if memory serves, said that these are now uh, Polypterus palmus, that subspecies don't necessarily exist anymore because we do want to make sure that people keep their bloodlines separate and that people do know what they're getting since many Bashir polypterid enthusiasts do know that there's differences here. We do elect to call them Polypterus palmus buttocopheri or Polypterus buttocopheri, even if it's not the most necessarily scientifically up to date just to help the animals out a little bit. These guys are awesome. I think they're really, really pretty and you can see even here on this, you know, bare substrate, so to speak, that bare glass, uh, isn't really showing it off much, but they are stunning. Lots of yellows and golds. We have that nice greenish. Uh, this is a beautiful, beautiful fish, very peaceful, and especially, I would say, one of the more active ones. Bashirs do oftentimes like plants that are a little bit more furnished, a little bit more dim. It's hard to miss a fish that's awfully big, uh, as I mentioned before, but them perching on their little fins like that is a really fun sight to see. And these guys can easily be kept in groups. Sometimes a lot of Bashir people will keep uh, one of each species, you know, the decor is the amount of Bashirs you have in the tank. Uh, this is a really pretty, really peaceful fish. Uh, doesn't get too large if memory serves. A big adult on these is going to probably top out at about 16 inches. I've kept these guys before and really enjoyed them. I've never had an issue with them, you know, bothering my catfish. And honestly, some of these more peaceful, smaller guys that I personally really like, I've been able to keep with smaller fish as well. Something this size I've been able to keep with jewel cichlids that were about two inches and as long as they were well fed I really didn't worry about it and truth be told when uh, they were fasted a little bit say I went on vacation still no problems really gentle for a fish that is a bit more predaceous but just really really cool I love these guys yeah these are my favorite by far do they keep this coloring as they get older or yeah uh, nice. so a lot of people kind of the I don't want to say the accepted thing but lots of folks swear by garnet sand because it has that nice reddish color it does cause them to intensify quite a bit, but the contrast is a lot more stark when you have them on a bit more of like a reddish sand. Um, I will say that you can keep these guys on gravel. Some folks don't like that because if they ingest it, they could become impacted. Totally understand that. I have done it when I was much younger and didn't have much problems, but I do recommend them on sand. Uh, as long as it's a little darker than the white we're seeing right here, you'll get a lot more of that contrast, a lot more of that yellow will show up as more of a gold. It's a really, really pretty fish. So uh, in a nice contrast, these are the only Bashir that's ever bitten me. <laughs> uh, Weeksy have the extremely funny name to me of the Fathead Bashir. I've also seen him as the Widemouth Bashir. 
Uh, they are really pretty. They are amazingly goofy. Like, that guy's fine. They just keep swimming upside down in the tubes. Uh, I've been noticing that all week. Uh, these guys do get pretty big and they get pretty fat. Uh, I would say the 18 inches is to be easily expected out of these guys. Uh, if memory serves, I don't think Weeksy has been bred in captivity, or, or if it is, it was either done long ago in Japan or no tank race specimens came out of them. Really, really cool fish. Certain populations, again, if you keep them on different styles of substrate, it'll go from kind of this brownish gray that you'll see with, I like the nice sort of mustachey marks or the eye shadow and the stripes on these. Some populations almost look like a steel blue. They're really, really cool. This would be a good candidate to go in with some of your larger Bashirs like Ornates or Enlis or, you know, a Datnoid or, I don't know, a pair of Oscars or something else that you might have the room for. Keep in mind these guys aren't super active, but again, 18 to 24 inches is a big fish. You want to have space, you want to make sure they can turn around, but they're really personable and really just fascinating. I love Weeksies. Uh, but they are, I would say, probably the most predacious one that I've run into. Some of the other ones like Conjacus or uh, Polyphorus Bashir can be way up there in terms of I would like to eat everything, but these are one of the ones I trust the least in terms of cannibalism. But that said, they're still a really freaking cool fish. I love these guys. Uh, I mean, you can see these guys trundling around or popping upside down out of a pipe. They're still really goofy despite the fact that they probably want to shove my entire hand into their maw. Uh, we'll point out that they do have teeth, uh, or at least pharyngeal teeth, and it does hurt a little bit. So uh, <laughs> just be careful when you're handling these if you need to. But really, really cool fish. One of my favorites. And of course, down here, we have the one that starts it all for a lot of folks. Uh, I remember me and my brother getting these at our local shop. It was among the first we had. I think we had one of these and then Lishirai alongside uh, some Embuna and some Angelfish in a 45 gallon. And for us being uh, preteens, it worked pretty darn well. The shears, a lot of the time, can kind of skate by with uh, larger, more aggressive fish that ignore them. Uh, if they can't eat it, they tend to leave it well enough alone. A few of these, I would say, are maybe a little bit aggressive, but so long as you give them caves, they're fine. Uh, this is a beautiful fish. I would say that most people would agree that this is the prettiest on its face. Uh, even tank ray specimens like these with a lot of variety, you'll see a lot of different colors in here, whereas the wilds we get uh, oftentimes look a bit sandier like that guy. Still beautiful, just a little bit different. Uh, extremely easy to keep. These guys do not care one iota about pH, and I would argue that for most of the Bashirs, uh, including the ones from the Congo, that they're very adaptable and that water hardness isn't tremendously important. Uh, for health and maintenance unless you're wanting to spawn them. Of course, I'm not saying to keep soft water fish in super hard water just because you can, but do know that there's some wiggle room there. Um, lovely fish, these do also get pretty big. 18 inches is probably where I would start on a big uh, adult, even for a tank race specimen like these guys. I know there's records of ornates getting massive, uh, but these guys are mostly going to just be very large. Uh, really pretty fish, very personable. They do come out quite a bit, and they're pretty adaptable in terms of what you can throw at them. Uh, most of these guys that I've talked about, I do feed primarily frozen food when I keep them. You can see some of these black worms that we're lucky enough here to be able to get in, uh, having so many fish. But a lot of these you can train onto pellet pretty easily as well. Uh, it just depends a little bit on keeping style. You know, some folks like the big predator feel and they'll be feeding these guys big chunks of tilapia or something don't feed them beef heart please don't do that i'm one of those people it's bad for them uh, i like to feed them frozen food when they're smaller but i have been able to train a lot of these guys on to say like shrimp or carnivore pellets without much of an issue either so here we have i would say almost one of my absolute favorites and uh for those out there saying boy this guy has a lot of favorites you're correct <laughs> i do love all of these guys genuinely Tugul's eye, you pretty much only see tank rays because these come from the Cross River in Nigeria, which is very, 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 very rarely collected from. Uh, most of these guys in the hobby, my understanding is that they came from uh, some fairly small batches of adults that popped up years ago and they were starting to captive breed them. Why I like these guys is I do like the Bashirs that are a little bit more sinuous. These guys you can see are a little worm-like. Uh, these get very long, I would say 16 to 18 inches probably on an adult. They're going to be really skinny. They're a little bit more secretive. Uh, in my experience, they come out, but I tend to have my tanks fairly dim or fairly well structured, possibly with some tannins. I think these guys have some of the best patterning. It's just that really nice checkering. Uh, a lot of gold, a lot of black that intensifies even yet more when you have them on a darker substrate uh, with a lot of black to them. Just a big, long 
worm thing that creeps out of the plants a lot of the time. Uh, and I think that sinuousness is what really sells me on them in addition to the rarity. Uh, there's a couple different breeders that do have these guys getting going. Uh, not many hobbyists are captive breeding this either just because I think they're so hard to find and so few people breed polypterids anyway. But very, very pretty Bashir, wonderful Bashir, and despite the small uh, population bottleneck that it sounds like they might have dealt with, um, and being, of course, pretty ancient fish, these guys are uh, pretty good. A lot of the time the finlets are in pretty good shape, uh, really pretty coloration, the heads aren't all weird. With some of the Bashirs being tank raised, occasionally you will see some that are a little bit more blunt faced. Uh, and these guys, I would say, for the most part, skip that problem. Really, really, really neat fish. Just superlatives everywhere for these guys. Great, great, great fish to keep. Yeah, these look great. Yeah. And of course, here we have one of the standards, one of the guys that you'll find at a lot of the big box stores alongside the non albino version, uh, the albino Senegalis. I have kept these before, I have kept them alongside the other guys. They are typically. I would say the community standard for Bashirs. I think that a lot of the breeding that's been done over to the years to these guys uh, does mean that you will see them stay a little bit smaller. They are going to be a little bit more, uh, sorry fellas, I don't mean it personally, but a little more sausage-like. Uh, but of course, factoring in all of those things is that these guys stay really small. I would say a big Senegalis would be a foot for a tank raised one. I am struggling to think of any times when I've seen one in captivity kept by a keeper that was any bigger than eight to 10 inches. Again, there is some debates about water changes and tank sizes, but I think these guys just don't get all that big anymore. Uh, and especially here in the United States, it seems like we very rarely see uh, wild caught Senegalis from any location, which I think factors into the gene pool as well. But it's a cool albino fish. It's a dinosaur eel. Hopefully I don't get in legal trouble for saying that because that's what certain box stores will bill them as. They're cool. They putter around on the bottom. They're small and peaceful enough that you can keep them with fish that are very small. Uh, I would say they're also one of the most tolerant in terms of water parameters and in terms of food you can feed them. I mean, it's just a small, neat little predator fish. And uh, even if they're not my personal favorite, maybe not anymore, I'd say that they're still, that's still a great fish. I mean, look at them. They're cute little predators that look like dragons. And if that means that somebody's like, oh, these are cool, what are other Bashirs that are really neat? And it helps as a gateway even. I mean, that's really cool. It's just a great, I mean, look at that guy just perching. Yeah, you can't not gateway neat. fish. Yeah. So these, I would say, are probably my favorite Bashir. Uh, I do love these guys. Very sinuous. The color on these is stunning when they grow up, and especially on a substrate that caters to it. Just really nice green with some banding on it. These are very thin. They are unfortunately very secretive. Uh, Hate to say it, most people don't like to hear that a fish isn't going to come out all the time. I know that pain all too well, being a quote unquote catfish specialist, enthusiast, whatever word you want to use here. But I love these guys. They're one of the most retiring Bashirs. I've never ever had a problem. What kind are these? Them. These are uh, Retropinus, the okay. Congo Green. Uh, just fantastic little guys. Most of the time when I've kept them, they would just stick to the rocks or tangles and roots and they would peek their little head out. They're long enough they can kind of seat their butt down there and when they're big enough to start lurching over like a little scarecrow or something. Love these guys, great color. I think a great personality, just maybe not as out and about as some of these bigger fellas that are gonna just kind of park themselves there uh, and chill right in front of your face. Really, really nice Bashir, and these are one that's going to be more insectivorous in the wild, so uh, one that I would trust with a lot of smaller fish, decent sized Congo tetras, you know, peaceful jewel cichlids and the like. Uh, really like these guys, I trust them with other Bashirs as well. Uh, always be careful to not uh, entice cannibalism, sometimes mixing different sizes can always be a little bit of a delicate process. The humble rope fish. Uh, yet another fish that uh, growing up I kept. I guess uh, Indiana was just a hotbed for me stumbling onto polypterids 20 years ago, weirdly enough. Uh, what can be said about the rope fish that hasn't already been said? They do get big, they like buddies. Uh, I really like this fish. And again, they're very charismatic. They're very, very peaceful. I mean, of all the fish that we're talking about right here, these I would say are gonna be one of the least, I'm not gonna say aggressive, excuse me, predatory, there we go. Uh, believe that there are some reports of them crawling onto land to eat beetles, which is insanely cool to me, or frogs. Uh, but so long as you don't keep them with anything, again, very small, then you should be just fine. I've kept these with a wide variety of community fish that didn't outcompete them. 
Unfortunately, these guys are a little bit more sensitive. They like really clean water. They can tolerate a wide amount of variance in terms of the water hardness. They can be a little tricky to feed. They're slow, they've got small eyeballs, they're relying on their snippers. So they can be tough. I would say that this is, despite how charismatic it is, not a fish for a beginner, but it is a really, really neat fish if you're wanting something kind of ropey and maybe a little bit less uh, predacious for, say, like a well set up West African setup. I had no problem keeping these guys alongside African glass caps or larger Congo tetras growing up. Really cool fish, just I would say this is one for sure to research before you purchase, just because they are so beguiling, they are so enticing, but sometimes it can unfortunately end in heartache. And of course, always, always seal your tanks. Don't care if there's a filter outflow, try to seal it around there somehow, because these guys love to crawl out. Like I mentioned, there's uh, reports of them crawling onto land to eat beetles. They don't know that what lies beyond uh, your fish tank is going to be probably a dry floor. They don't like that. Uh, so always, always, always make sure to seal things up really well because otherwise you unfortunately may have a rope fish that's uh, a little bit closer to beef jerky than one of these really wonderful guys we see swimming around. All right, well, thank you for showing us the by shears. I really appreciate it. Any last minute words on them? They're really cool. If you need something that's a little predaceous that sits at the bottom and have the real estate for it, they're really, really fascinating animals. Very uh, primitive, very ancient, and a lot of them are of conservation interest, so make sure to snag some and try to breed them. Awesome, so if you wanna get some, check out uh, wetspottropicalfish.com, use code STEAMFOT10, you'll get 10% off your order, and uh, until then, I'll see you next time.